All right, guys, welcome back to Establish the Past podcast presented by Clutch Points. I'm your host, Blake Bubble, with me, as always, my co-host, Dylan Reagan. And uh, no, I did not lose a bet. Dylan and I have not um, traded places here. I am wearing a, a Ram sweatshirt. Uh, but Dylan, the noted Rams fan, uh, probably didn't want to be wearing one at this point because, uh, well, it's just not happening. You never want to. I'm a gear guy. Dylan knows this. Like, I just I wear anything and everything. So, um, sorry, Dylan. We're not talking about the Rams today because we're talking about the AFC and NFC championship games. And last year we couldn't have said that, but this year we can. And uh, it's down to four, and uh, we've got two really fun matchups here. As we look at these uh, two games, before we do that, uh, we always kind of look at uh, one of the biggest topics in the NFL. Of course, Frank Reich back into the the picture as a head coach. He's hired to the Panthers. But another interesting hiring, Dylan, as we know, um, the Jets are hiring Nathaniel Hackett. No, they didn't. They didn't fire Robert Sala. Don't worry, Jets fans. If you you missed everything, that's that's not what happened. Um, <laughs> offensive coordinator for Nathaniel Hackett. He's not being the head coach. So. Uh, now, though, that makes it a lot more interesting, right? Because, Dylan, things become interesting. Why? Um, for one, Aaron Rodgers, who, you know, certainly ties to Nathaniel Hackett in Green Bay. And I feel like we do this all the time now in terms of, like, we have to figure out what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers, right? And, you know, as the years progress, we know the situation gets a little more complicated. And now, if you're looking at it, trying to figure out um, – What's going to happen, right? Like, what's going to happen with Rodgers? Well, here's a dot you can connect in terms of having him there and, you know, the Aaron Rodgers sweepstake, what what happens. Like, there's so many questions. Um, but, you know, trade possibilities, there's all kinds of interesting things that can play out here. But perhaps the conversation gets more intriguing with Hackett now uh, with the Jets. Yeah, at least for the from the Jets, uh, like their point of view and perspective as them as a possible team. Because at first – you know, Rogers talking on, on McAfee about this kind of stuff. It's not anything we're not used to. It feels like or a Groundhog Day situation where every offseason it's like the same three years in a row. We have the same kind of a conversation. But maybe this is the time. And Rogers has talked about it a decent amount in terms of he doesn't like in past years. It seemed like a little more assertive, like I want to be back. Now it's like it's in their hands, um, kind of from the point of view um, for the Packers. And I mean, if they get a big enough offer and they think it's just time given what happened this season and what they could possibly get in return maybe it makes sense in terms of the Jets they were uh, you know I initially saw them mention Peter King and his art, uh, weekly article had a uh, talked about the lofty you know trade package that a team would have to offer with multiple first round picks and other assets attached and how the Jets would uh, be kind of included in that range they, he also mentioned the Colts I think but then you had um, now, obviously, the Hackett hiring, um, uh, more stuff Schefter talking about how they'd only trade him to an AFC team, so that, you know, not surprising, but that narrows down, obviously, the group of teams we're looking at, um, and, and yeah, just, you know, we, we talked about the Jets as a place for, you know, Derek Carr and a veteran quarterback of some sort, um, given the, the talent they have, skill position-wise, you think with Brees Hall coming back, you know, if they draft another receiver uh, to, to complement Garrett Wilson and with some of the other weapons they already have there. Um, an offensive line that, you know, when healthy has a chance to be pretty good. They just have, you know, it's a ever ending thing with the Jets with the injuries they've had. But a big thing that helps a team uh, and this, uh, you know, as a quarterback, and just in general, is a good defense. And the Jets defense, I don't, you know, there have some questions with free agency that they have a lot of cap space or at least cap space they can manipulate enough to make some moves to keep a lot of these guys. That's a big part of it. I mean, to, to know that on the other side of the ball, you're going to be getting the ball back regularly. And it's not like the Jets' point of view, they need to do too much to have been given you know what the quarterback play they had this year and the fact they were for most of the year in the playoff position or at least close to it um they feel like they're probably closer and especially for robert solid and the other coat uh you know the whole uh, organization there they, they probably do feel a little pressure now in year three of solid and, and all those that regime to put up some more wins and get to the playoffs so maybe that moves the urgency um from Rodgers' point of view, are the Jets the best fit? I don't know exactly, but I don't think they're the worst fit. Um, I, I do think they have enough talent to compete and um, with an offensive line. It's an interesting, to you know, with Hackett, obviously uh, two of his MVP seasons there in 2020-2021 with him as his OC. Um, I mean, it makes sense from that point of view and how they could craft the offense and just some of the things, they, the skill position players they have. I I could see it making sense. It's uh, We talked about this, I think, even – before all this happened to a bit about the Jets, the deja vu kind of situation of 
the whole Rodgers and Favre situations as they wound down their careers in Green Bay, potentially here with Rodgers. And the fact that it could be the same team that they're possibly going to is pretty funny. And I know the Jets didn't make the playoffs with Brett Favre, but they were 8-3 and three, um, that year before. I think I don't know what the injury was that Favre had, but he was dealing with something down the stretch of that year. They lost, I think, four of the last five games and missed the playoffs. But uh, it, it's just the parallels are striking even more so with the, the way that their careers have kind of uh, in those two places kind of went down the wire. And now the fact that it could be with the Jets. But I don't know. What Do you, do you think there's another AFC team that – Looking at it, I mean, plenty of teams need quarterbacks, but that is built to win quickly. Um, not so much uh, looking ahead too far. Like I, yeah, you know, there's not a lot of rosters that even with Rodgers, it's not like the Packers. You know, they didn't make the playoffs in a much, uh, you know, maybe not as deep of a conference in the NFC compared to the AFC. I mean, you're you have to compete with Joe Burrow and and Josh Allen yeah. and Patrick Mahomes and Trevor Lawrence and all these guys. I mean, like the Raiders were a team that were mentioned at one point and I think have been floated by Jason Locke and four and other places as you know, not like that's gonna for sure happen, but a possibility. And I just think the Jets probably have a better situation to win now as their roster is constructed than most teams in the AFC that are in this situation that have enough assets to pull this off. Yeah, I feel like it's like the questions, right? I mean, it's – I mean, you know, someone like Baltimore, right? Like, we have no idea, I guess, what's going to happen with Lamar situation. Yeah. But I just – I feel like that's a – that's just – I just don't – I don't know why. Like, I just am like, I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, like, it's trying to find that team. And that's always the thing, right? It's like, oh, this guy – well, it's, you got to make the – you got to somehow connect the dots. And I'm like, there are not a lot that you really look at. I mean, the Raiders, we said, that's kind of a situation that's – becomes interesting um just just given where things are and i mean i i guess if you're looking at it from like the best setup of the available options right i mean let's look at this like i'm gonna go down the list here like we're not gonna mention every team but it's like if you really look at it like there's not a lot that, especially if you're just looking at the afc right yep exactly. um jet in the afc east the jets i mean patriots i just don't I don't know. Unless Belichick <laughs> is like, be hey, something. We're, we're bringing back Bill O'Brien. We're going to bring in Aaron Rodgers. We're just we're tearing this whole thing apart this off season, which he could do, right? He may, just he may do it. This is mad at um, that yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> he may just like you know what? We're going to go out and um, you know bring in a couple wide receivers. Like we're just gonna we're going all in. Maybe he does that. Maybe they find a way. I don't think that's going to happen. So the Jets to me probably the only option in the AFC East, AFC North. I mean, we could have said the Steelers, but now I, the Steelers there's no. Can he pick it? Like I think I don't know how they would would go that route. Um, like I said, Ravens. If things just got weird, Lamar doesn't come back. Like who knows? Ravens may just get to the point where like we're we're gonna go all in and try to do this with Aaron Rodgers. Who knows? AFC South. I mean, honestly, Dylan, it's probably. I think the expectation is the Colts are gonna draft a quarterback. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but it's like if they're in that spot, and if one of those guys so. is there. You know, it's, I mean, because we're assuming either C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young's probably there at that end, or Will Levis, I guess, getting talked about a lot. But um, Titans, I mean, they got the Tannehill situation. I just. Cap's an issue and then you go for to the, them, too, right? Yeah, Cap's the issue. I mean, it's not going to the Texans. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Sorry, it's Houston. <laughs> AFC West, it's just the Raiders. Like, I, that's it. So. If, if he's got to go to an AFC team, that narrows it down very to a very small list with the Jets and Raiders probably leading the way. Then I think you've got like the total wild card scenarios of a of a. I just I don't think Baltimore's it's going to happen. But again, we're we're having fun with New England. We're like, oh, what if the Titans were to move some space? I, but that's it. Like again, if it has to be an AFC team, those are the only two that probably make the most sense. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, mean, I yeah. It just doesn't the both you know again outside of the Jets even the for those uh, the other teams like the Raiders and Colts I just like the defense especially for the Raiders as we know has a lot yeah. to be worked on there's interesting things with the skill positions but the offensive line even the Colts offensive line wasn't so great this year after years of stability and you know talking about what they've been able to do so yeah, yeah from from the point of view of if you're a team that needs to win now has the ability to do so. Like it's not you're not just worried about selling tickets and yeah I'd really yeah, I think they are probably the best fit now they I, I mentioned the cap space thing I forget exactly 
what the moves are that they need to make to clear. They have an ability to clear quite a bit of cap space. They're not right now, if you look at Track or somewhere else, uh, exactly flush with money with the, the Jets at the moment. But uh, they do have the ability to create that space. So, yeah, I don't know. It's the, you know, there's a lot of NFC teams that I think would would love <laughs> to have him, but uh, it's just, yeah. that's the reality of it. I, I It's hard to, yeah. can't really even entertain those because there's no reason the Packers would keep him in the same conference. That makes perfect sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, the list isn't as long as you might think when you're like, oh, wow, it's, you know, this is all, yeah. one of the best quarterbacks of all time, a Hall of Famer. And then you look at the, just the talent as we, you know, we, ad nauseum talk about in the afc at quarterback with the young all the young guys that are uh you know running the conference now there just aren't a ton of teams that are in the place that are ready to win like the jets it's a unique kind of scenario where you're like all right we you could see how it could come together and now with hackett there it just feels like maybe the wheels are turning maybe it's not just something we're creating in our our minds to as an interesting concept it actually could happen <laughs> yeah it, it's a wild scenario I, i'll put the patriots as my number three I mean, because I just want to, I want to see it. Like, I just want it to happen. Like, it's just, I feel like it would just be the total um, wild, you know, move of the off season, which but Belichick's good for those, as we know, every now and yeah. then. So, uh, we'll see. But there's some thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. A long way to go to figure out uh, what's next for him, perhaps, uh, there. But what we do know is, uh, sorry, Aaron Rodgers, he's not going to be playing in uh, the championship game in the NFC or the AFC, and that's where we now head to our picks, uh, as always, um, you know, these are interesting ones, Dylan, as we said. Um, just look at these two matchups. I mean, sure, you can replace you know, maybe the Bills in there with the the Bengals or Chiefs or whatever. And But otherwise, like, these are the two matchups that I feel like you just you look at and you kind of salivate over knowing that these are the Final Four. And I think any combination that winds up in the Super Bowl, you're okay with because these are, these are four very, very good teams and four teams that are, you know, playing – their best at the right time and that's usually what it what matters when you get to this point all right let's start with the 49ers of the eagles eagles two and a half point favorites in this one um you know as we said you got a niners team that hasn't lost since the i don't know clinton administration or I don't, it's been a long time like it's been many years since uh they've lost a game and uh or, you know it's just it's it's been a while for, for the niners they, they are certainly playing with a ton of confidence right now um you know for the eagles of course they just took it to the Giants, as we said, a game we could have maybe made a case. We tried to. The Giants could keep it close. Didn't happen. Um, you know, Jalen Hurts and company, what they're doing on that side, the defensive side too. I mean, it's like, where do you start with this matchup? Because these are just two teams that are riding high right now, do some things really well on both sides of the ball. And um, this is this is quite a setup heading into uh, this one. In a game where I feel like this is a toss-up, you know, two and a half or whatever, um that gets to three i'd probably take the niners plus three because i just think that's maybe the, the best choice but i am actually going to pick the eagles to win this game i i just there's something about this eagles team dylan we talked about them a lot this season and say the same thing about the niners they're the home team if you flip it you know it's probably i'm picking san francisco but oh i'm gonna pick the eagles here i think and I, I have a pick down, but I, I'm still debating whether I'm going to change it. This, I mean, it truly <laughs> is both of these games. I, I mean, there's a reason yeah. their spreads are both, you know, a point and two and a half. And uh, these are four of the top five teams, I think, along uh, top six right there with, you know, the Bills and Cowboys. Bills didn't finish, obviously, great, uh, as we talked about in the disappointing finish. But they did, you know, they were number one in DVOA. These teams right here are two through five. So um, in terms of, like, depending on where you look, the Super Bowl odds are pretty much you know they're, they're, it's not like there's one like dominant favorite like depending on where you look some places have i think the eagles as the favorite overall some have the chiefs um so it just kind of fluctuates depending on where you look and there's a reason for that and especially in this matchup too i mean these teams I mean, have both sides of the ball but like when the when the eagles have the ball that matchup against the Niners strength on strength in terms of you talk about running the ball for Philadelphia they're first in the league out of 11 personnel uh, against the top defense in the league against with run defense against 11 personnel one area maybe Philadelphia and, and 12 when they have a couple tight ends in the field and they throw the ball that's something San Francisco hasn't been perfect against uh, we kind of talked about with Dallas too they you saw the Dallas going the Cowboys going with like two three tight end sets quite a bit um I, 
a unique part. It's something that we talked about when we analyzed that Niner Cowboy game. It's the it's the two headed monster of the receivers with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. I don't you know the Dallas didn't have that second compliment, especially when Tony Pollard went down as even as a running back, but not that second guy to like play off CD and open up some things. And as much as they've the Niners are one of the best teams against number one receivers, Football Outsiders uh, had them as the number four uh, defense um, against the number one receiver. They're 18th against number twos. So if you have a good number two like a Devontae Smith, uh, or depending on the day, AJ Brown, depending on who's the lead guy. I do think there's some things that maybe the Eagles can do. That being said, I do have concerns, you know, as uh, we've talked about leading up to the Giants game, even though I obviously picked the Eagles, that Philadelphia wasn't exactly a dominant uh, defense against the run. They finished 22nd in EPA EPA against uh, the run. Uh, San Francisco, 7th in offense. So, I mean, there's... So things where as much as, you know, it's going to be a, a, you know, with the talent they have in the secondary in Philadelphia and a really good pass rush, I think it is going to be still a challenge for Brock Purdy, um, just like the Cowboys were, but maybe a different one. I think maybe unlike the last game where San Francisco could not get the run going really most of the game, even towards the end when they started getting a few things, it was still like really hard work for San Francisco to run the football. I think they might have a little more success there. So, man, I, it's it's just a, as evenly as a match as you could uh, hope for at this case uh, at this point in the season it's like just two really good teams Philadelphia's r- past defense is so tough just overall so I think San Francisco is going to have to hope they don't fall behind in this one um, the same way that if Philadelphia does I, I have a little more confidence that they might be able to throw and, and figure some things out and still uh, stay true to themselves and stay balanced um, it's just going to be so fun I, I both coaches obviously what Sirianni not calling plays um you know having the humility to, to go in there after last season and even at certain points last year to and then this whole entire season to give up play calling duties but still be a, such a big part of how they design the offense I mean they've become just a stellar unit uh D'Amico Ryan's one of the best defensive coordinators in the league uh, now as of uh, one of the reports today on Thursday when we we're recording had him as the lead candidate, uh, depending on who you talk to, for the Broncos head coaching job, and I'm not surprised about that. I'm really happy about that as a Rams yeah. fan, um, that he could be gone from San Francisco soon. <laughs> um, and the flip side with what Shanahan's been able to do. So it's, I have such a hard time picking against either team because they're two teams I've basically just locked in to win every game since like the middle of the season uh, for a reason. And now clearly the best two teams in the NFC that deserve to be here. I... Right now, you know, I just – I'm going to stay with the pick I put down. I'll put I'll pick the Niners. I think I'll be a little more upset with myself if I didn't – if I changed it and then they ended up winning than I will be if the Eagles win. If the Eagles win, that's that's fantastic in my book. <laughs> but, um, I'm, I just – it really couldn't be just from a more unbiased point of view overall. And so I'm going to be enjoying the game on Sunday so much because these teams are just – just both stacked and everything about it makes me excited. I, the, I, my concern is that as much as I have been complimentary of Brock Purdy and I think that he's still, even though if he plays like he did against the Cowboys, that puts him in a good position to win. I do wonder if that difference at the quarterback position will let Jalen's been able to do this year and his ability at health wise to run the football didn't take too many big hits in that game against the Giants. If he can come in and give them another dynamic that they just the Niners really haven't seen, and it's not their fault. There's just not a lot of quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts, the only one that really they played Justin Fields in week one, and there was the game with all the crazy storms and rain, and obviously the Bears weren't relying solely on Fields to run so much as it did later in the year. So um, I, I, I am concerned about that part. I do. Th- there's a world where I think Jalen just makes some plays and uh, the Eagles are, are just too deep of a team, but I, I think the Niners are a worthy opponent, so I'll give them the, a slight edge. Well, some interesting numbers here. I, I think I like the under in this one. I think this could be a more de- a grinded yeah. out. So I feel like that's I think it's like what forty six and a half, forty seven right now, somewhere in there. Um, against the spread this season, the Niners are thirteen and six. Eagles are nine and nine. Niners four and three away. Um, Eagles are eight and two at home. Um, yeah, so like it's I. This is a. This is a tough one. I, I like the under two in this one. I think it's probably more of a, a grinded out type game and where the defenses kind of can dictate things. But then again, both teams have explosive playmakers on both sides and you know, oh. it could get points could be racked up in a hurry, uh, given that. So um there are some thoughts on Niners Eagles now. To the Bengals and the Chiefs, which, Dylan, uh, luckily this one feels a little more exciting as, as we looked at the prospect of uh, no Patrick Mahomes uh, in this one. 
a couple yeah. days ago, but now it does seem like he's going to play. And as noted, the Bengals are at the Chiefs, and the Chiefs are now one point favorites in this game, uh, where uh, the Bengals were favored by two and a half. Um, at one point, yeah. Yeah, on like just a couple days ago. And now that it's swung in favor of the Chiefs here by a point, but essentially a pick 'em game, uh, you know, with this one heading into it. And man, I. You know, I always say it's it's a tough thing to doubt Patrick Mahomes, uh, whether he's 100%, 5%. Um, it's just a hard thing to do. But I will tell you, I came into this fully ready to make my pick and fully uh, on board here, and I've not changed it after uh, picking against them against the Bills when I said I probably shouldn't have. I am going to pick the Bengals here. This feels like it's not the same as last season, but like it feels like we're in somewhat of a similar setting where it's just like they went up against the Bills. You know, Bills are the home team. Eh, maybe lean towards the Bills. Chiefs are the home team. Mahomes is back. Eh, maybe lean towards the Chiefs. But the Bengals, as we see, they just have, let's say they have something, right? But they have Joe Burrow, and that's a big part of it. Um, something else to consider here, Dylan. The Bengals are 13-4-1 against the spread this season. The Chiefs, 5-12-1. 5-12-1 are That's, the Chiefs. I would have never a, believed that. With a 15-3 and <laughs> record. How about that? Yeah. How nuts is that? Um, that is wild. I'm, I'm looking on covers here. That, it's exa- like If you go down the line, like they, yeah, like you go down the line in some of these games and they they won some close games this season. Let's call it what it is. I mean, they you know there were some games where they were favored big. They win them close, but they won them. Um, yeah, Bengals seven and three away this season. The Chiefs are eight and one at home. What a setup for this game! And again, it's exciting to have Patrick Mahomes hopefully back, ready to go. Um, I'm gonna pick the Bengals though. I just I think there's something about them again for the second straight year. Yeah, it's. I, I was looking back at last season. I think we uh, both picked the Chiefs in this one, so we get we're trying to maybe right some some wrongs from from the <laughs> yes, last uh, from the last time we were here. But it's I, it's it's the same but different. Um, like we've talked. I mean, the, obviously, there's no Tyree Kill. The Chiefs' offense has changed, and for you could you can make an argument for the better. They finished the year number one pass offense in DVOA. Um, obviously, Mahomes being healthy and healthy enough to move still somewhat is going to be paramount um both of these guys are excellent throwing on the run uh there was an esp in one of their stats that ranked qbs throwing on the run it had burrow first mahomes third so i mean just taking that element away would have been so crushing for the chiefs um and i'm yeah just obviously way more excited just overall for the matchup you never want a player of mahomes caliber to be held back he probably will be to an extent but we've seen great players adjust and he looked just fine in the second half even um that, that maybe it changes the play calling a tad uh their offensive line has a big challenge here we saw it's what the the bengals just did creating pressure with only three four men rushes you can expect to probably see similar game planning that they did for the bills just like they did in the second half to beat the chiefs last year and you know even at times yeah. in their matchup earlier this season i think it's going to be similar to the game earlier this season where just a couple of plays here and there are going to decide who wins either way a kelsey fumble ended up being one of the big moments in the regular season matchup i think both teams are going to be able to put up points even with the bengal or with the bengal's defense uh, in my opinion being a better unit um at this point uh last year in the playoffs obviously they played at such a high level so they're kind of comparable there i just and i'm hoping they didn't peak last week in Cincinnati because that was as we talked about in the last podcast their most dominant performance that we'd seen probably you know outside of maybe some regular season games but in the playoffs for sure with with Burrow they won a lot of close games last year to get to the Super Bowl uh, barely uh, edged out the Ravens in the wild card round but I mean to do what they did I hope they didn't peak early but at the same time I'm like I can't get over the fact of what how efficient this offense is, how Burrow just sees everything so well. Uh, it's hard to change the look, uh, you know, after the snap because he will buy time. And if you don't sack him immediately, and I, you know, the Chiefs, maybe they'll be able to uh, do a better job of limiting his ability to scramble. I don't know. I just think if you can't get him down that first time, it's it's a problem. You th- look back at the first touchdown they scored against the uh, Bills in the divisional round with finding Chase open after the fact. I mean, they just have so many talented playmakers. It's such a hard team to game plan for. I think they'll also be able to run the ball just as they did against Buffalo, maybe not quite as effectively. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, without the the surface, still have concerns about the offensive line for the Bengals. You know, yeah. I do think to some extent the snow really did 
uh, play in their favor with making it tough for the pass rushers to pin their ears back um, from the Buffalo's point of view. But I mean, the Cincinnati players played really well too. Um, it's just a it's a coin flip game in my mind, and I had I have a hard time because I, I just have this. There's part of me that's like we're. <laughs> You know, all the especially this week, the discourse has kind of become crazy with how much people are down on Josh Allen, and as much as yeah. we've been on top, we've been the biggest Burrow hype guys since you know before last season started. So after even before his rookie season, um, I you know I, I think that Mahomes, there's something maybe within him that a fire <laughs> like based yeah, on the, everything happening that I could see him just going crazy um, if his body will allow him. Um, I just think the Bengals are a more complete team at the end of the day, though. So that's yeah, ultimately why Cincinnati is the pick for me. Um, it's a, but both games. I mean, there's a reason again the spreads are so low. Uh, there's just not a ton of separation. These are four of the five, five, four of the six best teams easily in the league, and uh, there's no like surprise team that kind of made it to here at this point. These are all uh, teams that uh, by the midpoint of the season you knew were going to be right here to the wire and. Um, we'll see yeah it would be crazy if burrow gets the 4-0 against mahomes and the chiefs even you know all game i think all the games have been field goal uh finals so um i will not be surprised if it's the same either way this time no it's like when you get to this point we're basically deciding which game is going to be better and it's like i mean that's that's a good problem to have like you look at these these four teams specifically because again you don't always get this in these these kind of games now you get teams that certainly have gotten hot to get to this point but you know, they kind of ride that to a Super Bowl sometimes. But like this, I don't know. It's like, again, you if you replace Bills with Bengals or, you know, any of those trio of AFC teams, but it just feels like these are the teams that yeah. should be here. And, and that's what we're getting here with these two games. So should be a lot of fun. Uh, 49ers, Eagles, Bengals, Chiefs, uh, enjoy it because these should be two very fun matchups to decide who will get to the Super Bowl. But, of course, Dylan, all covered over clutch points. Uh, from every angle possible. We also mentioned the Aaron Rodgers stuff earlier. Um, that's something as well. I'm sure it'll be a big talking point moving forward. Um, all sorts of stuff over there. So let everybody know where they can find all that. Yeah, for all NFL news in the Clutch Points app, um, as well as on clutchpoints.com in the NFL section, you can follow both championship games in the app. But yeah, tons of, if you're uh, more concerned about your own team or other things at the coaching carousel, quarterbacks that might be traded, free agency, all that stuff, we're already looking at the best free agent fits for teams. Early look at those. We'll do some more stuff closer to free agency. Um, Tons of analysis of Aaron Rodgers, as you mentioned, and talking about the Jets fit, breaking that down further, um, all sorts of uh, stuff. But yeah, it's a fun time of year, not just as we know with these games, but so many things happening in the league. It's It almost feels like there's more news on the teams as we get to this part of the offseason coming up. It's going to be uh, a fun time. But I think, yeah, I'm trying to stay in the moment as much as I can with these games because, yeah, in this, even it's not like, you know, there's some years where you look at the, the championship games and you're like, you know, this Super Bowl matchup would be great. This one would be really good. This one's not as fun. I don't think, and I don't know if that was really the case last year. I think all of them would have been great, although I preferred any that had the Rams in it. Um, but out of these ones, like literally, I don't know if there's a matchup of the of the possibilities that I wouldn't be excited for. They're all like have a ton to offer, and that's just a unique thing and a really fun part of this. Yep, no, for sure. So, um, yeah, just a lot of a lot of fun stuff in the works, and like you said, some big games and. Just this is, I mean, this is the NFL season, right? Like this is what you you build towards, and um, this is the the exciting part. So, should be a lot of fun. But um, as Dylan said, check out everything over at Clutch Points. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, any podcast app you search for Establish the Pass. And uh, thanks as always for listening to the podcast. And we'll talk to you next time. You're on the Establish the Pass podcast.